Mecca said that you reverted to Islam in December, yeah. yeah? And we always, it's something that's good for us, and as well teaching our audience, the ones who are Muslims as well, to get some kind of affirmation about Islam. And as well teaching non-Muslims, why, what's the reason you become Muslim? Because many people, they think, why you'll find many youngsters like yourself and others, they, they revert to Islam. Especially, you know, many youngsters, they have the life, they have, you know, their lifestyle, etc. And then to choose to be devoted Muslim, to abstain from all things which is non-halal things, you know, it's not easy, yeah? But yeah, it is worth it because what we are, we are demanding, we are demanding uh, the pleasure of Allah first and we are demanding the hereafter and the paradise of the hereafter. We wanted to know what's your story, how did you become Muslim? And what are the reasons that you, you took the decision to become a Muslim? Okay, so originally I was Christian. Uh, Raise your voice so the people they can hear. Yeah. yeah, so I was a Christian and uh, for me uh, the Bible was the truth. I always talked to my friend about the authenticity of the Bible, how true yeah. the Bible was. But then over time I was just on and off with Christianity, I would sin and not repent. Um, but then I really started getting back into Christianity and trying to become the best Christian I possibly could become. Uh, yeah. And then I started trying to study apologetics, which is where uh, a Christian will study Christianity and then maybe atheism or Islam to try and disprove it and then a few points against them. Yes. And then I was looking at the Bible and then I'm, for me, the Bible can make sense to saying Jesus is God because there's verses like, I am the Almighty, which for me that can be saying that I am God for Jesus. However, there's other verses in the Gospel of John, the same book, where it says, I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father of God, yeah. which will contradict that statement. And um, also, also taught in the Bible, well, it's taught uh, in Christianity that Jesus is 100% human and 100% God. However, um, it's also in the Bible taught that Jesus voluntarily does not have all the powers of God, therefore how is he 100% God? Okay. And then I'm looking at the authenticity of the Quran and how it was revealed. So obviously Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he got it revealed through Angel Jibreel. Yeah. And uh, it was at a time where there was no Arabic translation of the Bible for until a couple centuries after his death. Uh, so. To say that uh, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him copied the Bible would be wrong. Uh, for example, like with the story about Adam and Eve, obviously Adam and Eve is both in the Bible, so it's. And, it's the, and the stories are, are different. Yeah, it's, it's the stories. If you, if you if you read if you read the stories in the Bible about Adam and Eve, if you read the stories of Abraham, if you read the story of David. In the, in the Bible, it's totally different from the, the story. Yes, it's yes, the names could be the same, but we're talking about different different things. So then, in that case, that's why to say it's copied, to say if it's copied, that means it has to be 100% exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. But it's not, it's totally different. We're talking about, for example, even the story the story of, of Pharaoh and Moses, yeah, and the story of the king and Joseph, that's totally, again, Quran saying, confirming that, that there's Joseph at the time of, uh, there is a, a, a king at the time of Joseph, and there is, Pharaoh at the time of Moses, which is a totally different era. era. Now, uh, and that's why, uh, you know, it's to say that the irony to say is that it's copied by the Bible. That's something which is good. That's something which is you came to this conclusion. But now, it showed you that because of all of these contradictions in the Bible, that this proved for you that the authenticity of the Bible, correct? Yeah. Now, what makes you accept Islam? What makes you that Islam is the proof? That's the, okay, the so. Obviously, then, if, if you're not a Muslim, you'd be that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the author of the Quran. Yes. However, if you read, uh, I think all authentic hadith says a percentage where it's like 52% of the language is uh, different as to the language used in the Quran. And obviously, yes. the Quran was revealed over a period of 23 years. Yes. So to say that one man managed to speak two different, like, he managed to speak uh, a language but used two different styles of speaking whilst um, living his life, like that, that's almost impossible for someone to do. So to say that he's the author of the Quran for me would be wrong. And furthermore, he, he knows about too much stuff. Like for example, he knew how many joints are in the human body and he knew that 1400 years ago. And obviously there being zero contradictions, for me it's a divine book. Whereas in the Bible, there are many contradictions. Allah says in the Quran, وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجِدُ فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كِثِيرًا If it came from other than Allah, then you will find a lot of dispute about it. اختلاف means dispute, means error, means different things, yeah? Yeah, so Allah says, if it came from other than Allah, you will find all of these disputes, you will find all of these doubts in mind. Because that's why the Quran is kind of consistent in terms of its message, consistent of the message of Tawheed. And there is something, there is one person who accepted Islam, and he mentioned before he accepted Islam, he said he defended Islam until he came to the point of defending Islam, so he became Muslim. But when he defended Islam, what he said? He said, if Muhammad, peace be upon him, was someone who would take advantage of the situation, 
because if someone is not divinely, you could say, uh, uh, supervised, yeah, if, if he's a prophet, he's divinely supervised. But Allah, Allah is supervising him. Allah is taking care of his message, correct? If someone is not like that, will take advantage of every single opportunity to prove he's right, correct? And there is one situation in the lack of the knowledge of the people that if, it's, if, if he was a false prophet, at that point, that he could take advantage of. When the eclipse happens, so an eclipse happens in the same time where he lost his son. So he had his son two years old, his name is Ibrahim, the youngest son for him, and he died. When, he, when his son died, the sun eclipsed. So look, these two coincided in the same time. The death of his son and the eclipse happened. They said either moon eclipse or sun eclipse. So an eclipse happened. So people, they start saying the sun eclipsed because of the death of the, of the son of the prophet. Allah wanted to show that, you know, the, the heaven is, is sad because of the loss of his son and because the prophet saw something, he was he had the grief that he lost his son, he was sad by losing his son. And he said, he said, barely the eye would tear, yeah? And the heart will become sad, and we will be sad for you lost Ibrahim. And we will not say except what pleases our Lord, we belong to Allah and to him we shall return. Yeah, he said this in front of the people. إن العين لا تحزن وإن إن العين لا تدعو من القلب لا يحزن وإن على فراقك يا إبراهيم لا محزنون. Yeah? ولكن لا نقول إلا ما يرضي ربنا إن لله وإن لله راجع ولا سيكسب وتتفيز واللون يبرم طلعتهم مشابكين. then the sun eclipses. yeah around that that time in the same day or something around that time. so the people they start saying the sun eclipses or the moon eclipses because of the death of the son of the prophet. this we open him. yeah. and when 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 he hear this, if he is someone, if he is someone. Not a pious person. If he is someone who is a false, as they, as they, if he's a, a fraud, if he's a false prophet, what he will say? Yes, that's true. Because people, they never experience this. They never experience that there is this eclipse happens. They never saw this in their lifetime. They never heard about it. They never experienced this. When they heard this, when they saw this, they said, this must happen, this must happen because of the death of the son. So they came to him, they said, well, he heard this, then he came, he went out, and then he, he gave a sermon, a small sermon. He said, verily the sun and the moon, those are from the signs of Allah. They don't have eclipse for the death of or the life of anyone, including a prophet of Allah, including the son of the prophet of Allah, including anyone. They will, no one will, the eclipse of the sun and moon has nothing to do with what? With the death or, or life of anyone. And he said, and if you see this, yeah, if you see this, Allah Azza wa Jal is warning his servant, Allah is warning the people that Allah is able to do such things. And if you see this, then haste and pray to Allah. Yeah? Salaam alaykum. Haste and pray to Allah. He didn't say haste and pray for me. Haste and pray to Allah at this time. Now, if he was a false person, if he was a fraud, would he say this? Obviously, he lived uh, quite a, a poor life at some points, I believe. Yeah. Uh, I heard that um, before he came prophethood, he actually lived quite a rich life. He was quite a wealthy person. So after prophethood, uh, apparently even his wife uh, had a, like a rebellion against him. Yeah, because, because they lived good yeah. life. Yeah, because they That's true. That's that's true. That's here. You see, that's why we want. That's something which is important as well. Yeah, he was he was merchant, and as soon as he became prophet, most of his time was spent in. In, in you know helping people, teaching people, until when he died, peace be upon him. That is salam Until he died, peace be upon him. Before he died, he asked Aisha in some narration. He said, "How much we have?" She said, "We have twelve dirham. Twelve dirham is insignificant." He said, "Do not take. Give it for the sake of Allah. I don't want to meet my Lord having any penalty." See, if as you said, you said his wife. They were complaining about the income. They said, and Aisha she narrated. She said, "There will be one." They said like that one Christian and two Christians mean one month and two months, yeah? And nothing being cooked at the house of the prophets of Allah and of the house of the prophet, nothing being cooked. And we used to eat just only dates and water for two months or three months. So if he is someone after money, you know, he will, he will take it down. Everyone will say, he had, he had opportunity when 
when he well, when he when he, had, when he was victorious at set against certain people, for example, and then when all when all the what they have, for example, especially for example when Khaybar, and when they got the when they got, for example, you know the the wealth of the, of the people which they were defeated, he didn't take it for himself. He did, he distributed between the people. This year, that shows us what all of these things tell you the the you know the the, the signs of his prophethood. This year, and that tells you that he lived a devoted. A devoted person to Allah Taala, and he died upon that. May Allah Azzawajal unite us all, me and you, and all our brothers and sisters, with him in the day of judgment. And is there anything that you need to add? What's the advice that we see to the people? By the way, how old are you, by the way? Seventeen. Mashallah, seventeen. Mashallah. <laughs> may Allah bless you, my brother. You, you said you are half Latvian, half uh, Italian, yeah? Yeah, it's my family. Mashallah, mashallah. So, what what message that you wanted to say? to the youngsters, per se, the Muslim youngsters, and as well, even non-Muslim youngsters, what's the advice that you give, you give, you give them? Uh, so, to Muslim youngsters in this country, uh, always follow deen, surround, surround yourself with other Muslims, because, for example, I see many Muslims in college, uh, that I go to, they're, they're doing bad stuff, they're you know, selling drugs, doing, you know, very haram. modest people, very haram stuff. Yeah. Um, for, for people who are looking into Islam, study the authenticity of the Quran and study the authenticity of other religious books and then you can see which one which one is the authentic book. And don't, don't look at is this just or not because if it's the word of God then of course it's just, it's most just, most merciful. And uh-huh. don't, look, don't look at whether or not you like to follow a religion or not based on what it teaches. Uh, follow a religion based on the authenticity of it and the authenticity of the God. Jazakallah khair. May Allah bless you, brother Luka. 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 May Allah bless you, brother Luka. May Allah increase with all khair and all goodness. And may Allah Azza wa Jal bless you and surround you with all blessing. I'm happy to see a young man like you become a Muslim, become a Muslim, and to see that you are, mashaAllah, someone who wants to learn Islam. And I will be happy, inshaAllah ta'ala, to be your teacher and to teach you, inshaAllah ta'ala, in everything. Inshallah, we'll, we'll share our contact. And if you need again, yes. any question, inshaAllah, anything, I'm at your service, inshallah. No, and I'm your, I'm your older brother, inshallah. And I will, I'm at your service. If you need anything, inshallah, ta'ala, just come to me and ask me, text me. I'm available, inshallah, ta'ala, to help you and to help all our brothers and sisters, whoever we need. Yeah? All right, look, it's like Allah. All right, take my number, inshallah, ta'ala. All right, my brothers and sisters, inshallah, Allah reward you and bless you, my brothers and sisters. Alhamdulillah, that Allah, I'm, Allah, first of all, may Allah, Azza wa Jal, increase us all in all khayr and enable us to be people who open the gates of da'wah to the others and bring people to Islam. And the key thing, that's a key thing which the brother Luka has said. Can you imagine that there are some youngsters who deal with, who does haram things at colleges or universities or things like that. So they don't represent Islam properly. It will put off people from embracing Islam or coming to Islam or thinking about Islam. So don't think that the sin that you do, even smoking cigarette in public, even smoking a single cigarette in public, you might be not representing Islam in a proper way, will put off the people from accepting Islam. So don't be amongst those who prevent people to accept Islam. Be amongst those who are bringing people to Islam with your behavior, with your manners, with your attitude. And that's what you should be, especially our youngsters. And think about the life is short, my brothers and sisters. So utilize your life, inshallah ta'ala, in the best way. And as the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu take advantage of five things before other five things come to you. Take advantage of your, of your, of your youth before you get old and take advantage of your health before you get, uh, before you get ill. Take advantage of your wealth before you get poor and take advantage of your free time before you get busy and take advantage of your life. Before you die, we ask Allah to bless you all. We ask Allah to give us all the money and all the good luck. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And I'll give you my number, inshallah. Just text me your name. Let me, let me type it for you. Yeah? That's my number, Sheikh Muhammad. Just text me your name, Luca. Yes. From the, from the park, and then I will add your, I will add your All right? All right, brother Luca. If you are around here, you know, I'm, I'm here if you need anything, yeah? All right, brother Luca. All right, look after yourself.